And while she's home, she loves to hang out with her puppy Apollo. Polo? Apollo. 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 A P O L L. Apollo. Apollo. We'll just say puppy. <laughs> Like I'm sitting here trying to figure out what to do with that note. If I was working from home there, this is where I would want my desk to go. What if we took the current design as it is? What if we flopped everything? Hey there, my name is Kelsey. And my name is Becky. And we are the Sorry Girls. Welcome back to Design and Conquer. This is the series where our friends and viewers send in spaces that need some major design help. We come up with a design for the space, but then we leave them to get their hands messy and bring our concepts to life. It's all about teamwork in Design and Conquer. Previously on Design and Conquer, we came up with plans for Allie and Kira's spaces. Make sure you guys follow us on Instagram because that's where we're going to be revealing and reacting to the fully made over spaces. We're gonna be posting it exclusively there. So um, I'll give you a second if you wanna head over to Instagram and follow us at the Story Girls. So today we are excited to be doing two more of our viewer spaces. So let's hop right into it and meet today's conquerors. All right, we are chatting with Kristen. She is a makeup artist in the film and television world. She lives in this really amazing railroad style house in Brooklyn, but because of the interesting layout, it could cause some design challenges. She would describe her idol as Stevie Nicks, which I love as well. And she's a big fan of thrifting and DIY, which should make our job a little easier here. So let's chat with her. Well, hi, Kristen, how are you? I'm yeah, good, how are you? Good. So maybe tell us a little bit about this space and how it functions now for you. It is a living room. It has potential to be a little bit more than a living room or a couch and a television. And that's really it. But it opens up to my bedrooms. In New York, we have these crazy styled railroad houses and you walk through each room to get to the other room. And so you ha it's all, everything is connected and there's no hallways. Because it is a hallway. <laughs> it's a hallway. <laughs> is there anything you would look like more in the space, like lighting or like more surfaces and tables or things that you're missing in the space that you want to see? I definitely like need more stuff on the walls. I think that it's very barren. It doesn't express like anything right now. There's like this weird area over here that like isn't doing anything. It's like wasted space. Okay, and then what's the lighting like in there? Is there an overhead light? Um, there is an overhead light. It's a fan. I like mood lighting better. I don't like to have the overhead lights on. There's no windows. So yeah, I, what lighting would be lovely. Mm, okay. So you can paint in there, right? Yeah, I can paint. I can do whatever Ooh. I want. <laughs> Now I feel like I get a little a sense of your style just based on what you already have in the space and kind of what you're wearing, but maybe talk to us a little bit about how you describe your personal style. I like bohemian style, but I don't like the clutter of mm -hmm. bohemian. Like, like I like the like color and texture and layers of it, but I like everything to be neat and clean. I think I like like mid-century modern bohemian and whatever clean and neat is. <laughs> <laughs> Minimalist, I guess. <laughs> or that just comes down to you being an organized person. <laughs> yeah, organization's a big thing for me. Any specific colors you're a huge fan of? I like like everything in this shirt. Oh, that's great. I love it. Beautiful. Okay, and then I think one of our last questions is, is there a budget that you're hoping to keep this project around? I had originally said 300. I could go like a little bit higher, but times are tough. Yeah, if you're down to DIY or thrift a bunch of things, that can really help out. Yeah, I'm, I'm in. Awesome, all right, well, we are going to come up with a design for your space and then we will reveal it to you and then you can get to work. Okay. Thank you for chatting with us and we're excited to get started. I'm so excited to see it. I'm, I love all your stuff. I'm just, oh. I'm, I'm just happy to be a part of it. <laughs> Well, we will talk to you soon, okay? Stay safe and healthy. You too, you bye. Too. Bye. So Katie is a production coordinator for children's animation and she moved from Toronto to Hamilton where she bought a house with her boyfriend. Like most of us, she recently made the transition from a commuting lifestyle to a working from home lifestyle. And while she is at home, she likes to enjoy illustrating, creating, and hanging out with her puppy. 
So let's check in with Katie. So Katie, tell us a little bit about the space that you need help with. Okay, so we have a third floor in our house, which is currently an attic slash TV room slash now my new office space for the next couple of weeks, maybe. It's a space where we throw everything that we don't necessarily know where to put, um, <laughs> but it hasn't been super conducive to me working very efficiently. And it's also not a nice place to hang out and watch TV in. And it's the only room that we have a TV in. So mm. be nice to have a better space for that. Okay, so it's gonna need to be like an office, a home office, a place to watch TV and movies, anything else? Also in terms of storage, um, mm -hmm. do you have a lot of Christmas decorations and clothes? Um, I haven't found a really cute way to hide everything. Um, so now they're under sheets and in boxes and I can't figure out how to hide it. <laughs> Do you want to talk to us a little bit about what you describe your personal style as? I would say I'm pretty um, mid-century modern, minimalist, um, but I do like bold colors. Like I really like a good uh, dark navy or like a deep forest green. Is there anything else we should know about the space? Other than the ceilings being super slanted and the layout of the room is a little bit confusing. So there's only certain layouts that you can do in here, at least that I've yeah. been able to figure out. A little bit like a Jenga puzzle. So if you are putting up shelves, there's only certain tall points that super tall shelves can go. Because um, right, everything right. else is like super short. Um, so that's been a huge challenge for me. Uh, what's going on with the couch behind you? Does it have a blanket over it? It does. So this is our sad Ikea couch that <laughs> has been covered with a mishmash of blankets. That's partially because we have a puppy or now he's three years old, but he was a puppy and he ruined the couch a little bit. Um, oh, no. So we need to get a new slip cover for it. And then as far as the budget goes, is there an amount that you wanted to spend on the space? Yeah, I'd say um, 1000 to 1500 would be a good amount. A lot to work with. Okay, I think that we have everything we need. You think, Becky? I think so. Let us like take this all away. We'll think of some plans and talk to you in a couple of days and tell you our thoughts. Awesome. I'm so excited. Us as well. All right. We'll talk to you soon. <laughs> okay. Bye. 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 Right after Kelsey and I had a quick call to talk about everyone's designs so we could get each other's thoughts on what we want to do with the space and to make sure we we're on the same page when designing. All right, you guys, it's now time to finally design some spaces. So, got my little laptop here, and I always like to start in Photoshop on my laptop just to get like the layout perfect and square. I find that like the iPad's more useful for being more like fluid and drawing things, but if you want actual like proportions right, for me, just starting on the computer is always the easiest way to go. I have up here her floor plan. It's pretty much to scale with all the furniture she already owns in it, and we're just gonna play around. A couple things she mentioned, the first thing was that it felt just like a room that was like a couch and a TV and that's all it was used for but there is a lot of like extra space it's windy today sorry if you hear that <laughs> but then there was kind of this weird oh I actually forgot to add it let me do that now there was like this bench in the one corner and she felt like that area felt like a little unaddressed and like kind of purposeless here's her little bench area but it was such a small area that like it's not really a seating area so I think the creative solve here is to kind of take this long space and make two spaces out of it so that it has like a dual purpose so maybe we have the couch and the TV on the one half and then she's already got that chair maybe we can use it to make like a seating area on the other half let's see what that would look like if I move the couch I can worry about making that side table fit later let's just kind of move this out of the way for now chair yeah I like that and like it looks like it's gonna fit well we move the TV stand down Okay, much, much. Um, crunch, crunch. my dog is having lunch, if you can hear that, I apologize. <laughs> so much more to say. So I feel like visually it's looking like everything's gonna fit really well as two separate spaces. So this is a really good start. Now, another thing she talked about is that she's not afraid of color and the walls currently feel a little boring. So like immediately when she said that, I was inspired by like, I think she had a blanket on the couch that had this really nice like burgundy-ish color to it. And I just imagined like an accent wall behind the couch. Let me draw that in. Yeah, 
so that's great. Let's tackle building out kind of this nook area, what this looks like a bit more. I think we love a chair, but maybe she needs like a little lamp to go beside it. Yeah, something like this I think is nice. It's like simple, but still hits that mid-century that we know she likes, and it's cute. Love it. And then I'm gonna add, ooh, I just updated to the new Photoshop and everything is in a different spot and it's kind of driving me crazy. Anyone else here with me? Okay, nice little gold floor lamp moment. And then of course, I'm like a sucker for floor pillows and you can always find those on Amazon. So let's add in some floor pillows. If we're gonna do that fun burgundy accent wall, I feel like navy would be really good as a complimentary color on the floor. You know it would be awesome too? Because that wall now, across from the chair is so empty since we shifted everything down. Be great to get her bookshelf. Let's see, mid-century bookshelf. That way she can either like actually use it for storage or it's an easy way to style a space. Just put like a couple knickknacks or like really nice things that you have on there. It's gotta be something not too big and something ideally in her budget. Oh, this is fun. I like the shape of this. More of like a farmhousey gray and that's not ideal. Oh, it comes in white though. $200, <gasps> wait, it comes in blue. And if we're doing a blue and burgundy theme, I'm so here for that. I was gonna say, this is pretty high, just adding up to her budget pretty quickly with a price like that, but I am so sold, you guys, on just how like gorgeous this shape and color is. Yeah, this is like becoming a mood. And we can put it here. Although I'm seeing now, see how this is the entrance way here to the room? This bookshelf is kind of like getting in the way. What if we took the current design as it is because the opening on the other side is bigger and you have more room to kind of walk around things? What if we flopped everything that we have going on right now? That might work, let's see. Huh, whoops, turned everything upside down. Don't know how that happened, that's fixable. Okay, this is looking like it's fitting a lot better. The one thing we haven't really addressed is that other wall now. It's currently still white in the plan, it's a little plain, so I'd love to give her some sort of art, maybe even DIY art that she could do up on that wall, keep it really budget friendly, but also like bring some life to it. You know what I've seen that I really like? It's like upcycled thrift store art, but like parts of it are painted just a solid color. Let's see what this comes up as. Something like this, but obviously not this because this is too much. Kind of this idea, yeah. So she can go to the thrift store, especially like older art should be really affordable because they're often like undesirable artwork that people don't want in their house. But if you find some cool stuff um, and then get colors in like the palette we're working with, like the burgundies and the navies, and just get simple dollar store paint and paint over them in whatever color, I think that's really fun. It's a good way to bring in color to that wall, do a gallery wall, keep it affordable. Oh, this one's even better. You can get funky with shapes and patterns. I love it, I love it. Okay, I'm gonna throw that as an inspo here. Okay, so I'm really liking how this is shaping up. I think this is gonna be really fun, kind of budget friendly, but totally revamp the whole space. So I'm gonna keep playing around with this a little bit, get it exactly how I want it. And I think I'm actually even gonna take some stills of her space and physically draw it out so she can see exactly how it might look and visualize it a little better. We are focusing on Katie's attic space. So this one is really difficult because I think it's hard never have, never have being been in the space, never have being, having never been, okay. <laughs> I think this one's a little difficult because having never been in the space, it's really hard to tell where the ceiling is like lower and higher and she did do a really good job she gave me really detailed measurements but still it's like one of those things that i feel like you really just have to have been in the space to really understand like oh the slope is here like that piece of furniture might not work there okay sometimes my pen doesn't work because when we are visiting our new studio coming soon i dropped this like, pencil straight onto the concrete concrete floors totally just like smushed and i was able to like smush it back but just sometimes i like go on a certain angle and i dropped it on the floor okay anyways the very first thing i want to do is figure out if her desk is going to fit in that little nook this little like window nook like I'm sitting here trying to figure out what to do with that nook. I'm like, sh I know she needs a place for her book, so I could do like low shelves and do kind of like all books in there. But 
since she is working from home so much right now, I'm like, if I was working from home there, this is where I would want my desk to go. I think knowing that that's the starting point, then I have the rest of the attic to play with. So circling back to Katie's style. She likes mid-century modern and specifically her enjoyment color forest green stuck out to me because I also personally love the color forest green. We did an accent wall at my sister's place in forest green. Between forest green and like a charcoal black, I literally just can't get enough and I wanna paint everything, but not everything. I wanna accent everything that color. Anyways. So with my furniture in there, I wanna try doing the layout differently than she has it. She has it so that the couch is kind of like on the other side of the stairs and the TV and speakers are kind of like across from that. I wanna really open it up a little bit because this is her only room with the TV. So I think it's important that this room feels kind of like nice and airy. So I'm going to rearrange it and do it so the couch is in the middle of the room and then put her existing TV and speakers on that back wall. Based on the photos and videos I'm seeing, it looks like that'll all fit and that the slope won't be a problem. And then of course to anchor the space, I need to play around with some rugs. I ended up going with a rug that's gonna sit in front of the couch instead of under the couch just because the size of the space. Okay, so now I have the problem of like what to do with her book. So. At first I was thinking of doing like a TV stand that had a lot of book storage in it, but I just don't think there's enough space there and she does have a lot of books. What's kind of jumping out to me actually is this one corner that doesn't have anything in it. I'm gonna try to find a corner bookshelf that's like low. So imagine like a lower bookshelf. Right now she has a lot of tall things and in this attic we need to go low people because- Am I wrong? We don't have tall walls. The walls are very short. So I'm gonna look online for like a corner low bookshelf. Oh my god, I was gonna do like a fake crack, but it was kind of like a real crack. Say crack again. Crack. So, I figured out some ideas. There weren't any really good corner bookshelf options, but when I was looking at bookshelves, I did find like individual bookshelves, and I was like, oh yeah, duh. Like individual shelves, I can make my own corner bookshelf instead of actually having to buy a whole unit. At first, I was like, Oh, I will have Katie get some wood, build some floating shelves. But then I remember that the LAC bookshelves at Ikea are actually really affordable. They come in all different lengths and sizes. So I actually think that that's the way to go. And we're gonna do them a white, which will match the rest of the walls because right now her walls are kind of like a grayish color. I would love, I think, if she wants, I would love, I think, if she wants. I think a good option would be to kind of paint them more of a natural white, and then we're gonna do a beautiful forest green accent wall. But for these corner bookshelves, I'm thinking of putting them in the front of the house corner and then along that accent wall, and I think that we can get a shelf long enough that will act as like the side table to the couch. I'm really excited about this idea. I think it's pretty smart, a good use of space. Now I know other than books, she has to store some other things. She mentioned being able to put some things downstairs in the basement, which I think is a good idea for whatever she can. And then anything else, I was struggling with this. I was like, where do I put all of this extra storage? So I had the idea to maybe pull the TV and speakers um, off of that wall that I have them against and then add a tension curtain rod and she can just sew her own fabric curtains very easily and then that can be some storage back there. It'll be hidden. It won't be like the easiest to get at but I think it's overall a pretty good solution for storage in a small space that you don't want to see. Let's talk about lighting. Now this idea is crazy. I don't even know if it's gonna work, but when I was actually doing my basement, I thought about this idea, which is like a faux LED panel window. And the reason I didn't end up doing it in my basement is because I had like real windows and I thought like a real window plus the LED panel would just look weird. So what Katie has is actually like a hole for what we can assume is a closed up skylight. Now my plan is to do a hack here where you can do plant grow lights or LED lights and then add some diffusion and we can get some wood trim in there to make it look like a window and then it can plug in and it can be like a fake window. I think if you do this correctly, it'll look really good. The lights and all the materials, you know, it's gonna add up to be like a little bit over a hundred bucks, but I think it's a pretty cool solve, especially for the space that kind of right now you're like, what is that? <laughs> 
What is it? And then something that is a little pricey, and I know it might be hard to spring for this, so I want to gift it to her, is a new desk chair. Her current desk chair just looks like your classic office chair. I found this one online that I think is pretty comfortable, but it's also super cute. So I want to gift that to her. And then of course I'm thinking some guitar hooks so that she could hang up some of the instruments that she has. Pillows make the whole thing come together. I'm so excited. Um, I'm really loving this space. I would love to hang out here and I hope Katie likes it as much as I do. All right, I am just about to show Kristen her designs. Oh, I hope she likes it. I think she will. I think she will. Ah, I'm so excited to share these designs with you. I'm so excited I, to see it. I think they're really fun. So there's two files, one that's like a flower plan grid and one that's like a drawing. You see it? I got it. Perfect. I see it. Yay. All right. So. We talked about how it kind of only felt like a couch and a TV room and we wanted it to be more multi-purpose. So I've played around with the floor plan a little bit and I moved your couch to one end and moved the TV down with it so we can clear up space on the other side. And I think this really opens up room to make a seating slash bookcase nook area. This way it'll feel kind of like you have two spaces going on. There's more of like the chair to chill and read in and then the couch and the TV area, which I think is really gonna help make that room feel bigger and more useful overall. I love that you said you were not afraid of color at all and you wanted to do something really fun on the walls. So I thought the wall behind the couch we could paint a really amazing deep pinky burgundy color, much like the shirt you were wearing before, and paint the whole wall that so it's bright and vibrant and fun and exciting, and I think it's just gonna do a total 180 for that room. So you had also talked about mood lighting being really important in this space and something you wanted to add, so I found you a couple options. The first one being this brass and globe mid-century inspired floor lamp. It was pretty affordable and I think it can go beside the couch as you first walk into the room. On the other side of the couch, I found these amazing hanging pendant lights. They're so simple as in they just plug in, there's no hard wiring involved at all. And the wood really makes them feel mid-century and kind of like the geometric pattern of them is like a really fun, almost art piece. I would love for you to hang them above the side table that you already have to the left of the couch. To fill out the seating area a little more, I thought you could get some simple floor poofs off of Amazon in like a nice navy and a teal color. That's really gonna accent the burgundy wall really nicely. If you put them beside the chair you already have and move the other side table over there, it makes this really nice seating area. Okay, now I'm sure you're noticing the bookshelf on the other wall. This piece, as soon as I saw it, I knew that we had to have it in this space. It's this most beautiful baby blue mid-century modern bookcase, which will be great for acting as storage, but also a really easy way to put decor on it. And I think it's gonna fill the opposite wall of the reading nook really, really nicely. It is a little bit above your budget, but I will talk to you about that in a second. Now, lastly, we wanted to do even more exciting things on the wall besides just the accent wall. So I thought since we are trying to keep this budget friendly, if you're down to DIY and upcycle some thrift store art, we could do some really fun stuff here. On the wall where the TV is, it's pretty blank as it is. So I'd love if you could go find some thrifted artwork that you'd be down to paint geometric, color blocking, fun, exciting colors on top of. I threw some inspo photos on the left here that you can look at and kind of mimic if you'd like. I also found this really beautiful Stevie Nicks inspired quote art, which I think you could do a similar concept by taking a favorite lyric that you have and painting it over some thrifted artwork. I'd love for you to hang them in a little bit of like a gallery wall layout around the TV, filling up that whole wall. And since the couch is now gonna be moved to the back wall, you already have that wonderful kind of wooden bead hanging. I think we can just move it over beside the chair. Most of these pieces all together keep you under budget, but the one thing I really wanted you to put in the space that would put you a little over budget was that blue bookshelf. I think it's so perfect for like the mid-century retro vibe and it's a really fun color. So as part of this video together, we are gonna gift that to you if you'd love it. Aww. You guys, thank you so much. It makes me want to cry. <laughs> oh, and no worries. Like we want, like we want these spaces to be the best they can be and the best for what you want. And obviously, budgets are really important to keep in mind. So, I thought that was something nice we could do. It's so sweet. Thank you so much. I, I and even just doing this is like taking my mind away from whatever is going on right now and like watching your videos. Thank you so much. I just, this is amazing. I love it. You are so welcome. I'm so excited. I've never thought to do a maroon wall though. I, that, I will 
say that. I think it's bold, but it's a really cool statement. Thank you for your fresh eyes on my, my room. <laughs> no problem at all. Um, I will talk to you soon. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Okay, so I sent you over the designs. It's one design, multiple photos. I totally just realized I forgot to put something in, but I can talk you through it. Okay. <laughs> okay, so if you want to open up the floor plan. Ooh. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to do was figure out if your desk would fit into the nook in front of your window. I thought that if I was working up there, I would want my desk to be there. And we can add a little bit of depth with some plants. And we actually have DIYs on mid-century modern plant stands that you can use for that space. So moving over to the living room area, I want to make it a little bit bigger, give it a little bit more depth. So that's why I went with this layout. We're gonna anchor the whole space with a rug and that coffee table that you already have is actually perfect for the space. And for the couch, I definitely wanna get a new slip cover for it. I was thinking in a beautiful natural linen, get some pillows and maybe even swap out the legs for a more mid-century modern look and it's a little bit more cozy and elevates the style of it. And then as far as your TV and speaker situation, I think the pieces that you have right now work fine. We don't need to use the budget on those. But what I did wanna do is pull those away from the wall and actually do a tension curtain rod and some DIY curtains behind it to give you lots of storage space. It's not gonna be like super accessible all of the year, but since it is for seasonal storage, I think it's fine if we put it there behind the TV. I did wanna get rid of your taller bookshelves because I feel like since the space is a lot shorter, we wanna use up the short space with something like shelving. So for that, I wanna do two sets of floating shelves that go in a corner formation, and that you can use as your bookshelves or other decor shelves. And I actually wanna extend it so it goes beside the couch, and then that will be the side table for the couch. There we can mount a small wall sconce and even do a mirror on that wall. And speaking of that wall, I wanna do a beautiful forest green feature wall. I think that's gonna be an amazing focal point when you walk up the stairs. Over on the stairwell, I want to hang up those guitars and instruments that you have because I think it's a beautiful way to use up the space and also have art. I think that your clothing rack that you had there was simple and white and actually went okay with the space. I don't think that's where we want to use some of our budget. So two things I wanted to do for you for lighting was switch out the overhead light to something simple and sleek and modern. And then something else I wanted to do was in that skylight nook that you have, I actually would love for you to try a DIY faux window. So in that crevice, we can add some plant lights or a bright LED strip, some diffusion on top, and then some wood framing to make it look like a window. And then lastly, I do think we should elevate your desk chair situation. So I found this one online as a piece for your new attic space. Overall, I came in like just under the top of your budget. What would put you over is this new desk chair, but we're gonna gift you that so you don't have to worry about that and you don't have to go over your budget. So. Whoa, thanks so much. This is so, I never envisioned organizing the room in this way. I think because I was stuck in such of a rut of like how to put things in this weird space that I didn't even envision that this was possible. Yeah. That's, that's great. <laughs> Good, I'm glad. It, it is hard. I had little layers up there to like mimic the ceiling so I could try to figure out, you know, how, where the low parts are and everything. So I hope that, you know, everything works out with the ceiling height and everything, but, and you might have to do a little bit of purging and getting rid of some stuff. Overall, you do have some storage there and I think it's really cute. I would love to hang out up there. <laughs> Me too. I'm excited for potentially this to happen. Yeah. Amazing. All right. Well, I will talk to you soon and um, stay safe and healthy. Yeah, stay safe. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, bye. Bye. We hope that everyone is happy with our designs. And if you guys want to see how these designs turn out and what the decorated spaces look like, again, make sure you follow us on Instagram at the Soria Girls, where we'll be posting some IGTVs of the final spaces. If you guys love this video, make sure you check out the last episode of Design and Conquer. We actually have a whole bunch of videos in this series. You can check them all out. Why not? So thank you guys so much for watching. And if you guys aren't already subscribed, make sure you do so. We have some Design and Conquers coming up with some YouTubers, which is really exciting. And we also have so many series on the go. My home series, Becky does DIYs around her house, Loft Vibes, our new office. I literally just can't even. So thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching and we will see you next time. Bye.